And we are back. We're here with Nicola Jones from Red Bell Partners. Uh, Nick, I want to go back to uh, that uh, topic, which is very popular right now about commercial repositioning, uh, change of use. I know that you have been very creative in a lot of uh, your projects. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about those projects and how you reposition? Absolutely. That, that's what we love to talk about. That's what we love to do. So over the years, you know, real estate is, is, uh, is an industry that is kind of old school in our ways and the product we build lasts a long time, especially if you build good product. And over time, people's preferences change, cities change, the way that we, uh, the way we commute, the growth of the city can possibly change. So we enjoy finding older buildings that may have been built in one generation or one decade for a different type of use and are today obsolete. That doesn't mean that they should be torn down. It means that we can look at them with a creative set of eyes and create an experience that you know, people in the community may enjoy. And We've been able to do this in the most widely known way of doing it is with industrial buildings that are in infill areas that may not be industrial anymore, that may be more residential or, or retail, you know, community oriented. And we'll take these older buildings and we'll find out what may be good users for that. And over the last few years, we've seen a number of type of users pop up that love to take these older, larger shells and uh, use the larger clear height space, uh, the historic old buildings with character and create a, a, a sense of third space that people in the community like to get out to and enjoy together. You see this with breweries, uh, distilleries, wineries, rock climbing gyms, uh, various restaurants. Uh, most of them generally are places that people can come and uh, you know, have large groups get together and really spend some time with human interaction. And so we've, we've done that on a number of buildings. Uh, we're working on one right now that would be a new rock climbing gym in an old historic industrial building that was never really activated for the community. And we're passionate about that because it is the, the way that we really get to plug in and, and make a difference on people's lives. You know, I, I do enjoy building more of the traditional type stuff. Uh, that's, that's fun real estate, it's fun for us to do, but the, the passion really lies in going into some of these infill communities and finding some of these older buildings and thinking of ways to revitalize them and bring it back to the forefront of uh, you know, people's interaction with their communities. So we see it with industrial, we're seeing it with retail. Uh, you know, there's some older retail buildings we've been able to uh, purchase recently that we've stripped back the walls and the ceiling to old historic brick and uh, historic wood rafters that you'd never build today. It wouldn't make any sense feasibly, uh, but we're able to provide that where when people enter these, these concepts, uh, you know, they have this sense of nostalgia and, and you know, bring it back to the original community. That is incredible, and I and I know that's your nation. That's why you have been very successful. That's uh, so the part of creativity that has um, you know bring you so much uh, rewards financially and, and as a person in your career. So my question is: When you go find a property, um, who thinks about or how who thinks about like the repositioning? Like for example, this warehouse. How did you come up with the concept of rock climbing? Or like when you take on a brew, uh, property that is going to be a brewery later, like how does work work? Do you have a buyer that wants to do that? Or you actually have a tenant that is looking for that? Or you kind of create a concept and then after that, you look for that tenant? Great question. It's, it's hard to answer directly, but I will do my best. When, when we see a building that we know isn't being used to its full potential, uh, we, we generally look at it and we really try to dissect it. And that's myself and my team and see where there may be areas that we can pull value or uniqueness out of it. And from that point, we will create somewhat of a marketing strategy um, and put targets out there of what we think could be a good fit. And then we'll send that out to you know, people within our community, people around the country that we know, and we'll really let the tenants speak for themselves on what they think is a good fit for the property. At, at the end of the day, we are real estate professionals and we are very good at what we do. And we are not the creative ones. You know, we, we have some creativity in our firm, absolutely, but the tenants we work with every single day, they still impress me with the way that they're building out their spaces, the way that they're changing their business that they have to adapt through, you know, what, whether it be COVID or other types of hurdles that come along in life. And so we try to create a platform uh, from the buildings that we find for these tenants to express, you know, what they want to represent in their unique way. And when these tenants are successful in doing that, the the customers generally flock to them and it creates you know, massive amounts of success for them, which then is wonderful for us because it creates success on our, on our investments and it 
also builds those relationships with those tenants. So now that we have done this a few times, we do have a number of tenants that we know uh, that we have good relationships with that uh, if we find buildings that make sense for them, we will place them in there. Uh, but we still do put it out to the market and let, uh, you know, let the tenants speak for themselves on how it may look. We just try to curate that uh, to the, our impression of what makes sense for the community and you know, guide them in the direction we think you know, could work best for the building. So it sounds to me like uh, you are kind of um, somewhat in the forensic world because you are taking a property that is not being fully used uh, to its, hi its highest and best use uh, maybe it's almost, um, you know, kind of dead on, not on the value, but on, on the full potential. And then you bring, uh, by having this idea of how it could be transformed, changed, uh, then you kind of bring it back to life. So that is amazing. And I'm sure that goes back to your purpose. So tell us a little bit more about your purpose, your passion, and, and what drives you every day. Absolutely. So... Our, our purpose is really to find value in real estate for ourselves and our investors. And there, there's a number of ways of doing that. You can find an undervalued dollar general, you know, in the, out in the middle of nowhere that you think, you know, you could blend and extend the lease and then resell it and, you know, create value there for your investors and, uh, and the purchaser. So creating value is, is what we're trying to do. And then our, our passion is how we do it. And if, if we have an option of doing that or creating value for ourselves and our investors in our real estate while also affecting the communities we invest in, that's where we really get excited and wake up every single day, uh, you know, excited to come to the office and, and put the work in because, you know, we, we live in the communities that our, our customers live in and our investors live in and our tenants live in. And so, you know, we are there every single day wanting the betterment of our lives as well. What's What's interesting and exciting about real estate is everything you do in your, in your life, you're affected by it, whether it be your commute home and the buildings you drive by, where you decide to spend your, your time with your family and your friends on the weekends or at night, where you decide to go to work during the day or the, the gym you work out in. Every aspect of your life, real estate touches, and these small differences that you make can drastically affect the course of someone's day. And that then could have affected the course of the people they interact with and their families and everything else out there. So while we have to create value, we try to do it in a way that positively impacts our communities and the people around us. And, you know, it's, it's exciting to be able to be in an industry that we can do that on so many different levels where, you know, some of our concepts are open first thing in the morning. Some of our concepts are throughout the day and then some go late into the night and being able to help shape the path of people's you know, their experiences in our lives in that regard is, is really, really exciting. We just have to be responsible in the way that we do it and make sure that the financial picture is number one and uh, that it's not, you know, a dream that we chase and, you know, get lost at times. So there is a lot of responsibility and financial feasibility that has to go into the base of it, but then the creativity gets built on top of that. Wow, this brings us into, um, into a great uh, topic that I want to talk about. So as you talk about financial responsibility, uh, it, it kind of comes um, to mind, you know, the state of the economy, interest rates going higher, um, people are moving to Florida, so less inventory in general for uh, commercial, residential, uh, but a, a lot of office space that is available after COVID. So what are your thoughts about the uh, current environment that we are facing in real estate, uh, commercial, uh, as far as you, and then also what do you see coming, what opportunities do you see coming, and what things do you think that people should be more cautious about? There is no doubt that there are changes in the industry right now. The, the catalyst, it appears to be interest rate rises right now. And with the last rise, it's, it's definitely becoming challenging. Um, I, you know, if, if interest rates going up were the only potential pitfall that we faced, it would be easy for people to navigate it and to make projects underwrite and work. But the interest rates going up are a function of inflation and a function of potential financial weakness that we're seeing in the market that, in my opinion, may be drawn from over leverage throughout our, our culture, you know, really our, our personal leverage as well as our company and uh, as well as leverage in our government. So when we look at deals today, we are very conscious of our downside risk and making sure that we're not over leveraging to make a return that we may want or need. 
but that we're being responsible with the amount of equity we put in the deal, with the amount of reserves we put in the deal, and with our underwriting for future growth. In the last few years, we've been really spoiled. We had very low interest rates. We had a ton of activity in the state of Florida and across the country. A uh, ton of people moving here, a ton of people spending money. There was a lot of money that was handed out after COVID that uh, you know lined people's pockets, and they were really wanting to enjoy themselves and spend it and get back to living. And now that you know that's somewhat dried up, we have to be conscious of uh, you know how we're projecting growth in the future. That it may not be you know five or ten percent as we've seen in the last few years. It may not be three percent. Um, so you know you have to be you really have to cross your T's and dot your I's on your assumptions and be sure that you know there's accuracy in them. I don't think that you know, we're going to be able to get back to where we were before. We are probably in store for a few years that may not be as easy to grow as we had in the past, but that doesn't mean that there won't be growth. We're starting to see currently a bifurcation in the product types out there between success and, and non-successful projects where, you know, the class A type of real estate where people still are moving to and want to be, uh, there's not enough supply for it. The demand is, is far outreaching supply. And with not being able to build new product because of construction costs in all these markets, um, you're seeing inflation in a lot of the rental rates we're getting. And, you know, that's phenomenal for the people that own that real estate. It's also challenging because then you're seeing it get passed on to the consumer and, you know, their pricing at the restaurants they eat and, you know, the places they go shop. So at the moment, there are still places that are doing phenomenally well. It, the question that we have is, as that inflation continues and it gets passed back to the consumers, where is the breaking point that they decide, you know, maybe we don't need to go out to dinner tonight. Maybe I don't need that next pair of shoes or I don't need to go see the movie. And when we see that break point, that's when we'll start to see, uh, you know, vacancies increase, uh, demand start to drop, and that's when we'll start to see some cracks in in the market. And, you know, that's, that's part of the, the ebbs and flows and the cycles that we see. So as individual investors, you just have to be conscious and really make sure that you underwrite your reserves and that you underwrite, you know, making sure when your debt balloons are, that it's not something that's surprise you where you may have been at 3% three, four years ago, and you have to reset now at seven and a half percent, you know, that can really affect someone's performa. So it's, it's really time to kind of look back and realize that, you know, it was, it was an amazing time over the last few years. I don't think we're gonna go back there anytime soon. Um, but at least we have time now to assess what the future may look like. And it's not, you know, a, a cataclysmic event like COVID that happens overnight. You know, if there are some shifts that are happening uh, with what the Fed's doing, we're slowly progressing into it. And, uh, you know, if you have that time, it, no matter how bad it gets, you can generally position yourself well for it. Uh, yes, uh, that's so true. Uh, Nick, being in the right place at the right time, kind of like when I saw a lot of foreclosures and acquired properties in the foreclosure boom, like it was at the right place, the right time. You acquiring these properties at pretty much free money in the commercial world. It was the right place, right time. So I feel that we are very blessed. And 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 right now we have to, um, you know, take be more cautious. But like like you say, there's also opportunities. There's a lot of creativity now about seller financing. Uh, so just there is things just evolve and we learn we need to learn to evolve with the market and that's what makes a person very successful in real estate as you evolve and change so um, i wanna i wanna um, pick your brain i know not only your brain i pick your brain enough but now your heart so i want you to inspire uh, all of our listeners about success about goals about uh, just fulfillment in life and I want you to tell us some of the mantras you live by or some inspiration that you want to share with our listeners and viewers. I love that question. So we, we are an organization that loves what we do. And that's, that's number one. And so, you know, financial gains is a large motivator within our industry. And it always has been. And it always will be. But it's, uh, you know, the, the trick is remembering what those financial gains provide and why you're doing it. And, you know, when we look at our employees and our investors, we want to make sure that everyone is living their, their life to their full potential. And, you know, the, the purpose that we provide at work is, is a joyous thing that we all enjoy. Um, but we want to make sure that, you know, deep down that, you know, we are, we are all human. We're all on this planet together. 
we're all going through this process together. And, um, you know, we have a, a strong commitment to compassion and enjoying the time that we spend on this. So it's, it's, um, you know, I'd say it's the way that we grow is, you know, we want to create leaders within our organization that then creates more leaders throughout our community. So every, every person we work with, uh, you know, we're block, you know, we're, we're training them, we're guiding them into leadership roles, but then they can take that into, you know, their families with, whether it be their children or the organizations that they, you know, donate their time to, um, or just, you know, growing up within our firm is when you build other people up and you give them the platform to be leaders, it can transcend across, you know, across the whole community. And it is something that, you know, in our, in our small circle, in our small corner of the world, uh, you know, we try to embody that and, you know, remind people there is a way to live that way um, and, and really enjoy it. It's, you know, we've, we've definitely seen, especially in the US, you know, you touched on it before, that we're very singular based and uh, it's becoming more and more. I think, you know, generations ago, we used to be a lot of, of pride within the country and working together and motivation as a, as a country to grow, where our culture is now designed on, you know, the, being a solo entrepreneur, the solo CEO, you know, changing the world. And that's, that's amazing for human innovation, but for the actual humans sometimes that isn't as good. And so, you know, we just need to remind people that you know, they can still uh, have that success without having to, you know, grind until the point that they're stressed out and their hair is falling out. Um, that it's not an either or, that you can still work hard but enjoy your life and appreciate it and uh, respect yourself and the people around you. So that's, that's what our company really tries to embody and tries to uh, project, uh, you know, hopefully in a successful way around with the people in our community. Great, Nick. Yeah, it's basically more of a holistic concept, you know, like being more balanced, and I believe the same, and I think a lot of companies are moving towards that and making a difference in the world and being conscious about the environment, also obviously making money. I mean, this is a capitalistic society, so we all we all enjoy that, uh, but it's more than that. It's more than, it's more than, more than that. It's also uh, helping others, inspiring, growing leaders, and in helping the ones that, that are not as privileged as we are. So uh, we're going to close our show at this time. We're so happy that you came and I'm very privileged to have you as a friend and dear colleague. And our industry is very, very uh, privileged also to have somebody like you with your creativity and purpose and commitment in the industry. And I want you to close with your contact information again and with any final comments that you would like to share. Thank you. I want to say thank you first and foremost to you for having me on your show. You are a wonderful friend. You're an inspiration. And uh, this has been a real blast. And I, I hope that people listening were able to pick you know, one, one tidbit out of this. And uh, if there's more you want to talk about, I'm open to discuss you know, whether it be our, our views of the future, uh, you know, how we built to where we are, or just general real estate questions, you can reach out to me. My email, as I mentioned, is nick, which is N-I-C-K, at redbellpartners.com. Or you can reach me on our website at www.redbellpartners.com. And if anyone reaches out, I look forward to speaking with you. And Adrian, it's, it's been a real, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Uh, so you heard it from the only one, the one and only Nick Jones from Red Bell Partners. So excited to share his story from wakeboarding to a very successful real estate investment CEO entrepreneur firm. Thank you so much for listening to our show and viewing our show. My name is Adriana Montes. You can contact me at adriana at floridadreamsrealty.com or 321-689-6258. And please uh, follow my YouTube channel and like my social media. Friend me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, and I'll be happy to hear from you. Thank you.